Uh, Coach Pineda, I, I know you, you've said several times that it might be too early to, to really evaluate the season, evaluate players, but what, at this point in hindsight, you know, what do you, how would you categorize the season for yourself and for the team? Well, obviously not a good season because we didn't at least make playoffs, which for me should be a must for, for our franchise uh, because our standard is higher than just making playoffs. That's, that's for sure. So in that sense, uh, it wasn't a good year for us and for me personally as a coach. Uh, once I said that, and, and yes, the, the real evaluation will take a little bit of uh, more time. Um, I can tell you that many, many things happened to this team throughout the season. Um, it, it seems when I started to kind of think how I'm going to analyze the season, it seems like there are like three different teams out there. The ones we started, then the injuries came, and then we play kind of in the middle of the season. Uh, with a different team uh, and then at the last part we kind of have a little bit more consistency so it's hard to evaluate the whole season or the players even individually where they, they lose a little bit their partners right so uh, so it's, it's really hard for me now even to think how to evaluate the, the entire season uh, but we will do we'll find the best way to evaluate everything uh, and for sure the objective and, and the, the beginning of 2023 is now and, and now we will think in what we need to correct, what we need to do to make sure that next year is a great year. Uh, so I want to say that I really appreciate the fans today. They were all the way with us and, uh, and their passion and the way they show today, even without anything to fight for in terms of playoffs or no playoffs, they show the, that they care about the team. They show that, that they, they support us. So next year will be for them and we will start today. And quickly, can you comment on Santiago Sosa's suspension, uh, the, the league reported that yesterday? Uh, well, first, first saying that obviously it's, it's not an acceptable behavior or language that we want here in Atlanta United, for sure, that starting with that. Uh, so we will, we will make sure that all of us, we, we educate ourselves, or it's a good reminder for all of us to understand what is acceptable and what is not. Uh, once I said that, because obviously that's number one. Number two is saying that uh, Santi knows what he did, knows that that's incorrect, and he apologized already. So I don't think, uh, I think it should be a, a bigger process for all of us, not just Santi. So I want to focus on that because you probably know, Felipe, that in our Latin American cultures, those type of words, we were educated a little bit like that. So even though that's not acceptable, because I know that, for sure, we have to re-educate a little bit our mindset on, on those terms, and uh, because because I agree with with those type of languages not being correct. Coach, uh, a lot of the pre-match focus. Um, two questions actually. A lot of the pre-match focus among fans was uh, whether Joseph would start, uh, considering the low stakes of the game, and and you know they're not fighting for playoffs anymore. Um, yet he didn't. Um, first, why did you decide not to start him today? And second, uh, is Joseph still in your plans for next season? Uh, well, the first one is uh, uh, the last part of, of the season, I tried to use Joseph in the most efficient way. And that's what I tried to do. Uh, understanding many things that, that went going after that surgery that he had in the middle of the season. Uh, or well at the beginning of the season, uh, I try to use him in the most effective way, which is the moments where we are dominating in the games, where we are in the final third, he doesn't need to do a lot of uh, long distance sprints or strides at high intensity. And I feel that that's the best way I could use Joseph in that part of the field. Knowing that Joseph is a big player, is a very good striker, but the, what happened after the surgery, I felt that uh, I needed to manage in that way Joseph. So that's, that's the decision, not just today, but the last few games where he hasn't started. Uh, but I still think he was a very valuable piece of the team because every time he came, he, the energy in the building was a bit higher and he brings a lot of energy to create chances and, and he carry on with one or two defenders inside the box and obviously he scored goals. The last goal he scored against New England is a testament of that, and we were very happy about that fantastic goal that he scored. But my job is to 
take care of the 11 for 90 minutes. And that's what I try to do, not just this game, but in the last few games. And can you comment oh. on the uh, second question? Yes, and the plans. Well, I don't know, honestly, a little bit that goes with the, with the question that Felipe asked about, you know, the whole season and the evaluation. We have to go through a, a very good process in terms of evaluating everything. One of those things is the roster and the make of the roster. Part of that is me, part of that is in conjunction with Carlos because he knows contracts and all that. So uh, we will have meetings and we will, we will let you know, uh, you know, at some point probably what are the plans and, and we will see. Just to follow up on that a little bit, how far away is this roster in particular from being an MLS Cup winning caliber roster? Well, what roster? The one finish in the season or the one start? <laughs> because it's different. It's very different. So which one? Both. Both, okay. <laughs> I feel that the, the first one that started was closer a little bit than the second one. The second one came out of uh, a little bit the necessity due to many injuries and, uh, and we tried to, to redo a lot of things without a lot of, without a lot of uh, uh, salary cap. So we tried to do what we could. Some of those uh, players that came in were very positive, were obviously uh, good signings for the team. But I feel that, you know, once we regain or recoup Brad Goose and Miles Robinson, Ossie Alonso, and, you know, uh, the stability of the team is better. And I think that's a, a championship caliber team. Obviously, we have to see, obviously, another positions where we can even improve uh, the team. But that will be part of the analysis that, that I, I've been telling you. Yeah. Coach, you mentioned that this team was almost like three separate teams that you had to coach this year. The one in the beginning that you started with, the one with the injuries that you had to navigate, and then the one here at the end of the season. How much of a challenge was it to coach these three separate teams throughout this entire season? How much of a challenge was it? <laughs> it's, it's a very good question, actually, because part of my reflection that already started probably in the middle of the week was after all the injuries and, and all the dysfunctional things that happen, right? Because we have to say it, it's not just Miles, uh, Ozzy and, and Brad. It was in the, in the fifth game, it was Rosetto and it was Joseph. And then at some point in the middle of the season, three fullbacks at the same time miss at least nine games altogether. So it was kind of what we plan in preseason, the type of football we wanted to play. Uh, even the goalkeepers, for example, Rock or Raul, they didn't train the whole preseason to know how we were playing out from the back or, or, or unbalancing the opponents and the movements and the tactics that went in behind throughout the preseason. And, uh, and then I, I made the choice of continue with the same style and the same identity of the team because it was going to be very hard for me to tell them, okay, no more player from the back, no more possession-based team trying to balance opponents, breaking lines. Let's play direct, let's play direct. And I don't know if I had also the players to do that style. So I prefer to stick to what we did in preseason. And at some point, I think we saw the benefits of good games, that we did very good games, but at the end we couldn't get the result maybe for the final product, what we always discuss on the boat boxes, lack of, you know, um, sharpness. And, and that's what happened. So it's very interesting reflection for me now, say, okay, this happened kind of 30% of the season, and then how did I manage that? And that's part of the reflection that I will take, but certainly it was very hard to do what, what I just explained. Hey coach, just to kind of piggyback off that, what would you consider would, I guess, be the highlight or the focus from your personal coaching perspective that, that you'd be focusing on the off season? I'm sorry, I couldn't understand completely. I'm sorry. What would you be con considering your personal, uh, I guess, your goals in the off season from a coaching perspective? From the coaching perspective, is uh, reevaluate a little bit what's the best game model to succeed with Atlanta United based on the players that we have and the the ones that we might bring. So that's kind of the. The, 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 the part of the reflection that I will do for next year. Then a little bit uh, talking about methodology and some of the cultural improvements that we did in our building and how we are going to even improve that 
to, to create an even more professional environment for our players to be um, a bit more accountable for things that, that have happened in terms of management and discipline and stuff like that. So those areas for me are the key ones, the game model, the methodology and the culture, and we will reevaluate that and, and we will all together, because it's not just me, it's my whole coaching staff that that has been with me the whole time and, and I'm very proud of what they've done with me. Uh, they will help me for sure to, to arise in a better way next year. Felipe, last one in English. Uh, Gonzalo, you, you mentioned game model, and, and I know that if, if you don't have injuries, you know any manager is going to want to stick to the, the original idea, stick to the philosophy, make sure the players are understanding. So you didn't get, you didn't have that. You had a lot of injuries, and the players have having to really adjust mm -hmm. as well. Do you are you willing to perhaps in in, in this off season and moving into twenty three adjust a little bit? Like I know you want a style, but do you believe that in in, a, in evaluating a game model, it could change the way that this team plays next season? Yeah, well, I, I would say there are two things. One is the is the style, and then the game model. So the style determines the game model, and the game model is coming with the players. But the style has to be dictated not just by me, but the type of players I have. I mean, if I have two tall number nines that are very good in the direct play, and then I have two fast wingers to to attack on the back, and then I have two. I don't know how to say it in a better way, but Bulldogs in the middle of the field that win every second ball, why not play in direct, winning those balls, and then, yeah, if I have that, maybe I adjust my style to that, but I don't have that. What I have, and which I'm very happy to have, is technical players that are willing to combine very well, that are willing to unbalance the opponent through passing, breaking lines, trying to create more and better chances than the opponent. I have. Uh, ability on the flank to isolate people 1v1, get crosses, I have good number nines, so I feel that we should do something similar to what we have done. Now once I said that, based on the specific players that we will bring and the specific players that may stay, I will try to, to say, okay, now the style is this, now maybe the formation is this, and whether it's back three, back four, whether we play with a diamond, whether we play with three midfielders, whether we play with two and, and four for two. So that will change, but the style might be remaining or tweaking little things. I would say it's going to be very hard for all of us to change completely the style that we played. We want the same style, but obviously with better outcome, because if you check uh, a little bit on the numbers, one of the teams with, with more expected goals is us, one of the teams with more possession is us, uh, and we felt that just in the two boxes is where we were lacking a little bit of, of sharpness, not just quality, but sharpness, because we have the quality, but probably we couldn't get that, that, uh, be, be that uh, sharp in the, in the final touch. So uh, we might tweak something, but we have to see what we have. Profe, una curiosidad y una pregunta. La curiosidad es, usted pidió a Mosquera y la pregunta es, a veces el equipo intenta hacer presión alta, pero hay descoordinación y rápidamente renuncian a esa presión. Entonces, ¿es que no, no el equipo no tiene ese estilo? ¿O definitivamente es que de pronto es falta de, de, de creencia de los mismos jugadores para que funcione esa presión alta? Bueno, creo que hoy, hoy por muchos momentos no funcionó la presión alta. Eso, eso creo que estoy totalmente de acuerdo contigo. Hubo muchos momentos del partido donde no funcionó. Eh, ¿Por qué? Porque también enfrente tenemos un equipo que juega muy bien al fútbol y crédito para New York porque tienen un gran coaching staff y lo han hecho muy bien el día de hoy. Eh, y quizás también hay que darle crédito al rival, pero no por eso voy a renunciar a la presión alta porque creo que es la mejor manera de recuperar el balón. Cuando tú eh, cedes demasiado la iniciativa al rival, te conviertes pasivo y de repente creo que tampoco somos tan buenos siendo pasivos, tercio medio o bloque bajo, para esperar a los rivales y contraatacar. Creo que no es tanto nuestro estilo. Eh, lo que habrá que trabajar es hacer mejor la presión alta, entender mejor la forma de hacer la presión alta, los recorridos que habrá que hacer. Pero también creo que muchas veces la táctica estaba ahí, los movimientos estuvieron bien, pero no ganábamos ese, ese duelo individual, no pudimos en el primer tiempo, en el segundo tiempo fue mucho mejor, estuvimos apretando alto y, y ganando los balones de manera alta, entonces es la ejecución de esa estrategia lo que hay que mejorar y, y estoy de acuerdo contigo, hoy no funcionó y sobre todo en el primer tiempo y, y por momentos nos vimos mal en esa presión alta coach, Buenas. 
Eh, tuviste muchas alineaciones durante toda la temporada. Eh, ¿con, ¿Con cuál de estas alineaciones te quedarías tú que dirías, este es el equipo que necesito? Bueno, muy buena pregunta, te lo voy a decir muy rápido. De, del equipo que pensábamos que iba a ser el inicial, cuando recién estábamos en el off-season exactamente hace un año, nunca pude jugar con ese once. Ya con eso creo que... Te, y, y si dijeras, bueno, pero es que faltó uno, no. Faltaron por lo menos dos en la gran mayoría de los partidos. Y si la memoria no me falta, no me falla, solo puedo jugar con nueve de esos. Fue lo que más pude poner en la cancha de los que yo creía que iban a jugar la mayor parte de lo que era mi mejor once. Entonces yo creo que de ahí... Pues ya te contesto un poco el, el, lo que pasó en la temporada y toda la, la disfuncionalidad que tuvimos. en Que todos lo sabemos, ¿no? Las lesiones y todo. Sí, todo eso. Pero eh, solamente quiero decir, en, seguramente pronto daremos una conferencia de prensa donde quizás podemos hablar más, más al respecto. Y disculpa porque quiero ir a hablar con los jugadores y, y nos vemos muy pronto. ¿Ok? Gracias. Gracias.